Can you imagine what it would have felt like to be in the city of Jericho that day? And you hear the collective stomp of all of these soldiers all around your city, not saying a word, just marching around. It must have felt so eerie. But then they just leave. And so then I'm sure they were confused. Then when they came back the second day and the third day, they were like, oh, I see what's happening. You're taunting us. (laughs) That's what's happening. But then by like the fourth, fifth, sixth day, they're probably like, how long are they going to do this? And what's the plan? What happens next? By the seventh day, when they don't stop after the first trip, and they start taking their second and third and fourth trip, they're probably realizing, oh, we're about to find out what's going to happen. And then to hear that long trumpet blast after all the rest of them have just been short, and then the battle cry of these warriors, you would be terrified. And then the sound like the sound of rolling thunder, right? Whenever the the walls just tumbled to the ground. And if you are standing there and then you just see this flood of soldiers coming your way, absolute terror, right? At that moment, they knew it's too late. We're doomed for destruction, right? And like I said before, they had a chance. They could have done what Rahab did. They could have given their lives to God, trusted him with their life, realized that they were doomed for destruction, but they chose not to. And now that they are looking God's people in the face, looking their death in the eyes, they're realizing, well, it's too late now. And, you know, I'm sure they're not the only ones that felt this impending sense of doom, right? Because all the people knew that they were in this city. And they must have seen them circling the city. And then when the walls fell and they completely overtook the city and burned it, everybody's feeling a sense of doom, right? But again, it's too late. There's nothing they can do. When we recognize our sin too late and God's power and his ability to save us, we realize it too late. There's nothing we can do at that point. And that's where they are. Now, did you also notice how many times they said seven, seven priests, seven trumpets, seven days, seven times around, right? God uses the number seven as a symbol of completion because he created the earth in six days. And then on the seventh day, he rested and looked at all he had created. And he says, it's complete. And so when God uses this number seven, he is trying to say, it's finished. This is all done. And that's what he was doing here with Jericho. By using seven priests to blow seven trumpets, March for seven days, and then on the seventh time around, all of the walls falling, he's saying, it's done. This city is gone. The first battle is complete. And then also what happened on the seventh day is God dedicated that day to himself as holy. And so listen to what it says in Joshua 6, verse 19. It says, Keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, lest when you have devoted them, you take any of the devoted thing and make the camp of Israel a thing for destruction and you bring trouble upon it. But all silver and gold and every vessel of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the whole city is devoted to God The people cannot touch anything. Some of the things are devoted to God for destruction and some of the things are devoted to God as holy things. But everything belongs to God and nothing belongs to the people. 
If the people were to have taken any of the things into their camp that were devoted for destruction, then they could have been making themselves the object of destruction. By bringing destructive things into their camp, they're bringing trouble upon themselves. And so God says, do not take any of the things that are meant for destruction into your camp. And you know, there are evil things in this world, things that need to be destroyed. First of all, these people were evil. They hurt others with their evil acts. And God cares about innocent people. Sometimes the evil just has to be eradicated. And then there's evil things, things that if we bring them into our lives, they're only going to bring us trouble. And we have to get those things out of our lives. We have to hate evil and cling to what is good, right? That's what it says in Romans 12, 9. Hate evil and cling to what is good. That's the only way that we can keep ourselves from being tainted by those things. And so we want to do away with the evil things. They need to be devoted to destruction. And then the things that couldn't be destroyed by fire, the gold, the silver, the bronze, and the iron, those were all taken into God's treasury as a sort of earnings for him. This is the first battle that they fight. And so it's kind of like the first fruits when they have their very first fruits of the season. They dedicate some of those to God. That's kind of what's happening here. He said, this is the first battle and I want some of these things to go into the treasury of my house. And now these things are dedicated to me as holy. So the people don't get to touch these things. These are only for God's house and for his purposes. Now, God asks us to give our first to him for lots of reasons. One of the reasons is to show him that we know that without him, we wouldn't even have any of what we've got. And so if he gives us something, we give him some of it back to let him know we, we know we wouldn't have this without you. And then another reason that we give of our first is because we want to show priority to God. Notice that God gave Joshua and the Israelites one task to do every single day. And it couldn't have taken too terribly long to march around this wall. And so Joshua could have done this at any point in the day. It's like, this is the only thing I have to do today. So I'll just get up leisurely go about my business, and then we'll go and do that at whatever time we want to do it. No, notice that Joshua got up first thing in the morning and did the thing that God asked him to do. And that shows that he knows this is the most important thing that needs to be done today. I will make sure that I get this thing done today. Because what happens whenever we get up and we just go about our business? Sometimes We had something in mind that we were going to do and then other things get in the way. By doing the thing that God asks us to do first thing, it's ensured that nothing else will get in the way of that thing being done. And so I was thinking about this in my own life and realizing how often I don't get all of the things done in the day that I want to get done. And sometimes those things are things that I believe God wanted me to get done that day. And what would it be like if I would have just done that first thing in the morning before all of the business of the day got started, before I filled it with other things and ran out of time. And so that's just a little side note of something to just think about in your own life. What might you need to be doing first thing in the morning to show God that he is important to you, that he is your priority, and that the things that he wants you to get done in this day are your priority. So that is why we give our first to God. It shows him that we're devoted to him. 